deliberately left this one out to avoid this from happening. Hey y'all, 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 Welcome to New Location McGee, as she likes to be called it. Old Location McGee and I had a bit of a falling out. Well, at least we have so much more room for activities. And heh, the ambiance of this place is crazy. This is the first time I've ever experienced what charm smells like, and it smells a whole lot like piss. Well, in terms of what to talk about first, I guess I can look at exactly how many games I promised to take a look at soon. Jesus Christ. All right, let's just get this one out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Super Mario Galaxy 2 was originally developed as a remixed and expanded version of the original Mario Galaxy, with Nintendo EAD initiating development right after the release of the first game. They just kept coming up with more ideas, and I think we can all understand why. The entire concept of Super Mario Galaxy had and still has so much potential. Galaxy 1 didn't not feel fully realized or incomplete in any way. It just felt like the game's concept could easily warrant a sequel. Under the development names of Super Mario Galaxy More and Super Mario Galaxy 1.5, the team realized they actually wanted to sell the game, so they gave it the title of Super Mario Galaxy 2, achieving full sequel status. This was actually because the new ideas they were cramming into this thing just started to overload the expansion they were developing, and it was enough to consider it a full-blown sequel. At E3 2009, the penultimate big reveal of Nintendo's press conference was Super Mario Galaxy 2, sporting a tall low Logo, showcasing Yoshi being brought into the mix, new galaxies to explore, some new concepts, and that was about it. It was truly more of Mario Galaxy. About a year later in North America, it was released on May 23rd, 2010, with a May 27th release for Japan and a June 11th release for Europe. This game just started to roll in the praise. If you thought Super Mario Galaxy was a critical success, you're a moron, look at this! Jesus, man, people absolutely adored this game. Now, with this in mind, and Mario Galaxy being my favorite game of all time, you'd think I, nope, I bought it three years later. Yeah, I mean, give me a break. I was 13 in 2010, I was more so worried about what flavor of Capri Sun was in my lunch. Plus, I couldn't drive, I didn't have 50 bucks to spend on a new Wii game at whim. Whatever. Come 2013, I find it at a used game store, and I'm like, yeah! I picked it up, I played it, I loved it, I stopped about a quarter of the way through. I don't know, man. I think I just got distracted with other things, but recently I finally sat down and played through the whole game. Let's talk about it. Super Mario Galaxy 2 picks up right where the last one left off. Gotcha! Galaxy 2's story is told via this storybook method and starts things off with the Star Festival, a celebration that happens every 100 years. Rewind to Galaxy 1 where it starts things off with the Star Festival, a celebration that happens every 100 years. Yeah, it's weird. Super Mario Galaxy 2 is kind of a retelling, reimagining, whatever you want to call it, of the first galaxy. Let me just quickly recap the first one. Bowser kidnaps Peach. In this one, the Bowser kidnaps Peach, but with a much more lighthearted, almost comedic tone. Galaxy 1 was meant to be taken a bit more seriously than other Mario games, especially after Sunshine. Scenes were much more dramatic with intense lighting and a booming orchestra. Peach getting kidnapped by Bowser is an everyday occurrence, but Galaxy 1 not only had us exploring the cosmos to get her back, but introduced us to Rosalina, who helped us out by allowing the use of her ship, the Comet Observatory, and she also had some actual backstory. Completely optional backstory, but hey, it was still there. Shigeru Miyamoto wanted Galaxy 2 to have as little story as possible, and it shows. They do manage to stuff a good amount of cute plot in here, I guess, but the problem I have with this isn't the light story, it's completely disregarding the first game even happened, or just flat out ignoring a ton of elements of it. Yeah, at the end of the first game, Rosalina resets the events of everything, but Mario still remembers what happens, and Galaxy 2 just acts as more of a reimagining of the same events from 1. I get it, they wanted the game to be more accessible to newcomers, but already naming it Super Mario Galaxy 2 is gonna deter some people. Might as well come up with a more clever plot that both returning Galaxy fans and newcomers can enjoy. I mean, I don't care about it that much, but the plot and ambiance of Galaxy 1 was some of the best in the main Mario series, was far from intrusive, and didn't bog the game down in any way. So to see it downplayed so much here, in my opinion, 
is a bit of a shame. Anyways, the opening section starts off in 2D and gradually turns 3D, which I always thought was really smart, both a showcase for the progression of the Mario series and helping to ease newcomers into the game. Once you meet up with the baby Luma, it then gives you the ability to spin attack. You see a Bowser the size of Mongolia wreaking havoc on the castle, he kidnaps Peach, go. After completing the first level, you're thrown onto a ship run by Lubba, Luma equivalent to that wacky uncle we all have. Grab power stars to power the ship to get to Bowser easy peasy. And with that, the best way to describe Super Mario Galaxy 2 would be it's as if Super Mario Galaxy just kept on going. I gotta be honest, nothing screams evolution or progression about this one. It's just more Mario Galaxy levels. Nothing drastic was changed or improved, just differences in how the levels are presented to us. We'll get to that in a sec. Should anybody complain about it? God no! What really needed improved with Mario Galaxy to begin with? I think any problems people have with the game are just based on Galaxy's formula of more linear level design, and even then, I think you have to admit, it's not bad, it's just probably not for you. There weren't many definitive problems with the original game, so with a sequel, I almost think it would have to be on an all-new, more powerful platform to be more distinct from the original. With this being Super Mario Galaxy 2, this of course means that Galaxy's mechanics are all brought over. From what I can tell, everything is retained from the first game. You can jump, crouch, long jump, wall jump, spin by shaking the Wii remote, it's all back and still feels great. Gravity is still a key aspect of the gameplay here as we can walk all around various terrains. However, it's definitely downplayed compared to the first game. Don't get me wrong, Galaxy 2 still does a ton with gravity, but it felt like the first game flaunted it a lot more. 2 is more so concerned with using it when it benefits the level design. One thing Galaxy 2 definitely does differently is the difficulty. This isn't the hardest game out there by any means, but it's definitely much more difficult than the first game. I welcome the challenge. While Galaxy 1 was never painfully easy to the point where it was boring, it only really got challenging near the very, very end of a 120 star playthrough. Galaxy 2 definitely puts up more of a challenge, and that makes it more interesting if you're playing both games back to back. If you're way past lame at a certain level though, and die like way too many times in a row, the game offers the cosmic spirit as a helping hand, taking the form of a ghostly Rosalina. It'll complete the level for you, no thank you. Like I said, Mario Galaxy 2 feels like more of Mario Galaxy 1, but with some changes to its format. Galaxy 1 was a much more linear take on 3D Mario games. Most missions were more so getting from point A to point B compared to Mario 64's and Sunshine's, which were much more open-ended. Mario Galaxy 2 takes the linearity from Galaxy 1, takes a highlighter to it, and does unspeakable things. Galaxy 1 didn't really have a lot of exploratory levels. The main one I remember that kind of felt like that would be the Honey Hive Galaxy. And even then, calling that a super open-ended level is kinda hyperbole. Galaxy 2 focuses a lot more on obstacle course-like stages. There's not a ton of exploration here at all. Galaxies in this game feel more like a series of platforming challenges. It doesn't feel out of place compared to the first game, though. First off, Galaxy 1 had its fair share of obstacle course-like designs, and also, we're in space, anything can happen. A giant block of wood, it's in space, it makes sense. I think the best way to describe it would be imagine if Super Mario 3D World was way more interesting in terms of its design. Galaxy 2 is platform challenge after platform challenge. Also, this game is way, way, way more fast paced than the first game. It feels like the game is constantly shaking you, telling you to get on with it and select the level, get to the end. With more linear designs, that means there's not as many Power Star missions in each galaxy. There's only about three per stage, but that means we get loads more unique galaxies, so it feels like every other minute, Galaxy 2 throws a brand new idea in your face. Of course, this is a 3D Mario game, so you have to get to these levels somehow. The first game featured the hub world known as the Comet Observatory, which was cool, but had very little in terms of things to do in it. You just entered different rooms to access the levels. Galaxy 2 uses this, Starship Mario. Compared to the Comet Observatory, this thing is the size of a nickel. However, there's far more to do here. There's more characters to talk to, and there's more things to screw around with. I wish it was much bigger though, everything feels really cramped. But all this is completely optional. The meat and potatoes here is the front of the ship. Step on this pad and you're taken to the world map, a way to get you straight to the action. Many have compared the world map in Galaxy 2 to older 2D Mario games, and to that I say, what 2D Mario games were you playing? This is fundamentally just a straight line. You don't really get much of a choice as to which level you tackle next. Every now and then you hit a fork in the road and get to choose, but the majority of the time, 
The game tells you you have to beat a certain level to progress. That's fine, but definitely a bit different compared to the first game. The world map is way less interesting, but does make things a bit quicker to just hop into a level. However, there's some really odd bloat here for a game so hell-bent on getting you into the action as quickly as possible. Like take for example, on the world map you may encounter a hungry Luma, these you have to feed a certain amount of star bits you've collected to access a new pathway to new levels. Clicking on them, calls them to Starship Mario. You then have to walk up to them, talk to them, feed them, they transform, then you have to go back to the world map to access the levels. Why? Why not just do this whole thing when you click the Luma on the map screen? For a game that's so adamant about just shoving your face into new levels, this always stuck out to me as an odd design choice. Also, a brand new collectible in the levels are the Comet Medals. After you collect them, the Prankster Comet version of that level will become playable, which is a remixed, more difficult version of that stage, whether that be putting it under a strict time limit, giving you only one sliver of health, that kind of stuff. Here's the thing though, while I like the idea of the Comet Medals, they were never a challenge to obtain. I grabbed almost every single one of them my first time through the levels, so to me, they never really held much value at all. Of course, for the medals that I didn't find my first time around, it was a bit of a chore to go through the levels I 100% completed otherwise all over again just to get the medal. It's just an extra step to unlock the prankster comments. In the first game, they kind of appeared randomly after grabbing most of the power stars in the corresponding level. Alright, I just whined about a sequel to my favorite game of all time long enough, let's get into the main portion of the game, the levels. <laughs> oh, God, this is good! Chompworks Galaxy, oh my god, it's like you're part of a Rube Goldberg contraption trying to get a chain shot from point A to B. Cloudy Core Galaxy might even be sexier than Gusty Garden Galaxy from the first game. Puzzle Plank, god, what a boppin' tune. Every single time you blink, this game throws something new at you, it's insane! Flipsville is just neato, not gonna lie. Throwback Galaxy? Only Super Mario Galaxy can rehash so much and get away with it. Jesus, the absolute size of this boss fight. This game is absolutely fantastic, it's amazing. It has some of the best level design out there. It does some things differently compared to the first game, and they aren't bad changes by any means, they're just different. It helps differentiate the two games more, because while I don't think Galaxy 2 had to be wildly different from the first game, let's be honest, putting the two games side to side, it might be pretty hard to tell which one is which. I welcome the changes to the format. But I'm a Galaxy 1 guy personally, that's why the whining just had to be there. I think both games are equally good when you get down to it, so considering which one is better, it's more so down to personal preference. But let's talk more Galaxy 2. The most obvious new additions to this game are as follows. Yoshi. Yeah, Yoshi finally makes his Galaxy debut in the sequel, and it was definitely worth the wait. Up on him, and now your cursor turns into a Yoshi Tongue Passport, allowing it to get to all kinds of places it shouldn't be able to. Yoshi also has various things he can eat up to gain certain powers, turning into a giant balloon, illuminating hidden passageways, and zipping through an entire level. These are a blast, and really solidify Yoshi as being one of the best additions to this game. But Yoshi isn't the only one getting new power-ups. Most of Mario's power-ups function the same as they did in the previous game, as in they all have that that glorious contact sensitivity. Most are only really here to give you a break from the standard hop and bop action. All power-ups that were in Galaxy 1 reappear here, except for the Ice Flower and Red Star. I mean, those wouldn't be the power-ups I would remove personally, but whatever. The power-ups introduced in this game kind of make up for it. The Spindrill, Rock Mushroom, and Cloud Flower. The Spindrill and Rock Mushroom are kind of in the same camp. They're fun to use, but of course are only really useful in specific instances. The Spindrill allows you to drill into the ground and come out the other side, and the Rock Mushroom allows you to pummel through hordes of enemies or break certain objects. Cool power-ups, but they pale in comparison to the Cloud Flower. You can walk on clouds and create up to three of your your own, so you can save yourself from impending doom or get some serious height. Now this is what I like to see in a power-up, something that makes me say I WANT THAT rather than looks like I have to use that now. Now this is where I would talk about the game's graphics and sound, but what's there to say? There's really not much it does better than Galaxy 1. 2 uses a blue sky more so than pure space for the background accompanying levels, the music is still orchestral bliss. There's not much to say about it other than it continues what Galaxy 1 did, and the graphics and sound are both phenomenal. After going through six worlds, we're face to face with the final level, Bowser's Galaxy Generator. And oh god, this might be one of the greatest final levels out there. It feels like a major test, a culmination of tons of things the game has thrown at you to this point. It all ends with a battle against Bowser, which is fundamentally very similar to other boss fights with Bowser in the game. But then after you think you landed that one last hit, for God's sakes, Mario games have to stop doing this whole, wow, you beat the final boss, just kidding. 
Oh my god, this is absolutely amazing. It's over. God, this final section of the final boss fight was so cool, but it ends right before it's getting good. It just ends too quick. I wanted it to last longer. And thus, the game ends with a cameo from Rosalina, and we can play around behind the credits. That's fun. Well, since I haven't fully beaten this game until now, I think it's only fair that I 100% it. That was a blood clot of a good time. Definitely much harder than the first galaxy, but I totally feel fulfilled. I wonder what I get for getting all the stars. No. Yeah, after getting 120 stars in the game, 120 more green stars appear across every single level. They're nothing more than just click on a green star mission, find the green star in the level. There's no hints as to where it is except for a vague sound clue, just a giant game of hide and seek. You get one final super hard level at the end of it all after nabbing all green stars, but guess what? No thank you! I think after a 120 star playthrough, this is kind of the last thing I want to do. Before you say, well Galaxy 1 had you 100% the entire game a second time as Luigi to get that final level. That final level was just putting a bunch of purple coins in the opening section of the game. Who cares? I didn't really. Just like how I don't care to get all the green stars, at least right now that is. Maybe in a year or so I'll go for it, but right now the green stars feel like filler, extending the length of a game that didn't need its length extended. So, Super Mario Galaxy 2. It's phenomenal. However, I'll always prefer Galaxy 1, and it's totally a nostalgia and an emotional attachment sort of deal. I totally get why many prefer Galaxy 2. In a lot of cases, it feels like Galaxy 2 looks at everything Galaxy 1 did and says, <laughs> that's cute, and just ups the ante. More levels, more ideas, more Galaxy. But to round up why I prefer Galaxy 1, allow me to introduce my brand new reoccurring segment. Why I prefer Galaxy 1 to 2, I am running out of ideas for new segments. Galaxy 1 did it all first, so it's just a bit more special to me. The setup and story isn't as cool as Galaxy 1. I prefer the format of Galaxy 1. While 2's ideas can be cooler, 1's levels were just a bit more memorable to me. Galaxy 2 has way more filler and reuses way more ideas than 1. Now, am I wrong for preferring Galaxy 1 to 2? Yeah, probably. Well, after wasting so much time getting 120 stars in Mario Galaxy 2, I've spent no time bringing in the dough to pay some rent. But I caught these landlords hard. You see, the water here is free. All I have to do is bottle up some tap water, sell the water bottles at a water bottle stand for profit, and then I'm gonna be living on paying my rent on Time Avenue. So that's what a surplus is.